This is Stephanie at High Tower Stitching with today's video. It's part two of a four square brain teaser quilt. And today the part is adding prairie points to the quilt top. This is a reminder of the quilt that I was working on on part one. Here is a quarter of the quilt top that's finished. And I got to the part it was time to do the border and I thought, well, I'll just put my own border on there. But the quilt, I guess it's the colors that I used this time. Nothing's really striking, it's just kind of plain. And I thought, well, I'm gonna go with their idea of doing the prairie points, which I have never done before. And I'll show you that there was a brown border that was added, then the prairie points, then another border, and then finally the last border to complete it. And it looks really good. And what started out as a little lap quilt has gotten bigger than that. You can tell from my helper who's holding it up. But this is where we are right now after adding the prairie points. So let's look at what happens when we make a prairie point. I've never done one. It's not hard. For this pattern, you start with four and a half inch squares, just like the ones that you cut before. And the first thing you're going to do for a prairie point is fold it in half as neatly as you can and press it. And then you're going to take and turn it and fold it again and get it as even as you can. And iron it and that makes your prairie point you have an open side and you have a folded side pretend that this is the quilt top this is the first border that I added this was one and a half inches and the um, seam is pressed towards the dark material and we're going to pretend like this was one side I've already put in the points down on it, so I'm ready to move on. Now this is going to sort of go backwards because there's my fold, but I just want to show you that when you do that first piece, you set it in there so that it matches in that corner. And that probably wouldn't have been hooked down yet, but that's that gives you the idea. And they're just, they sit like that. Then you're going to take, and if you'll look over here, there's a little stack. And so as I was doing them, I would make the extra four and a half squares and then I'd go ahead and press them. Now this is pretty dull looking, but this is the ones that I had left as I was doing it. And what I tended to do was put the darks in a pile, a row, and the lights in a pile, and a row, and even by colors so that I wouldn't have the same colors too often to keep up with. So what happens is we're going to take a look and let's move to this piece right here and we're going to start in the, the part of the quilt and you don't pin anything down when you start then that's the nice thing about this you're going to take and open up the, your um, prairie star your prairie point and you're going to take and slide that one in there and it, you're going to experiment a little bit but the basic thing is you're going to have to have a 1 8 inch seam and then a 1 4 inch seam so you want to have at least that much in there. Don't, um, so what I'm saying there is don't slide this way out there because you won't have enough to hold it. So put it in there. And if you go in too far, you'll have plenty of material. And then you'll go to the next one and pick one that you want to put in there. But again, you're going to leave your prairie point open side going the same direction. The reason you're not going to pin it down yet is because... You're going to might get to the end, and if you watch what's going to happen to me right now, just by accident, so you can see how far I are, how far off I am. So with this one being short, I could just slide everything over and then keep it and work on adjusting it. If you're coming from the other way, you could take and move things over and adjust them. That's the nice thing about it. And you're going to keep adjusting it until you've got them right where you want them. It doesn't take long at all. And you'll go all the way to the other corner. All right, once you get those down, you're going to pin them. And I learned 
that if I take a pin and I pin this out here, that keeps my edge from sliding. And then I, the next pin I put in is right where those layers come together because you actually have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or more layers. So pin into that. Now I'm going to try and get close to the edge the first row. So I'm going to put my pin back close because I don't really want to, I don't want to pull my pin out until that is sewn in there. But I don't want to hit the needle either. Uh, hit that either. So the next thing I'm going to do is I go to the sewing machine push this up and I'm going to start and I'm going to make a scant I'm going to make about eighth of an inch seam going right along there. Okay, I've come to the machine and on my pretend quilt there was that first side that I had shown you. So I'm going to take and I'm going to go, and I'm doing the outside rows of my quilt first, and then I'm going to do the top second. So I've got my needle in, and it's really close to the edge so that I can catch what I have. Well, this is really supposed to be the one-fourth inch one. So let's just quickly go back, pop it in. And now I'm going to do the one-fourth inch. The needles were all gone from under there and come out to the point. And so when I've done that, now I'm looking like this, and I've got the little prairie points pointing up. And I'm not. I'm going to go in, and I would go to now and press those with the dark material pressing back that way. But we're going to pretend that we did that. We do a lot of pretend. All right. Now I'm going to go, and I'm going to run my one eighth right along this edge. I'm going to watch that my pins don't get under um, in the way of the needle. And if I need to slow down a little bit, I slow it down. And I watch it when I get to those big, big layers. I'm keeping a nice, small seam in there. And you can always unpin it and uh, fix it if, if you don't like the way something's going. And there I just caught one of my pins because I was talking. But I didn't run over it. There he is. And this one will see in for this little piece, so I'm going to poke it under. And here we go. Now, that was doing that eighth. I do that all the way across, and you can see that. Now I am going to take my pins out because I'm going to work on the one fourth inch. We've got those all set nice in place. Now I'm going to take my, this is my actually my second border, my white brown borders under there. There's my prairie points. Okay. Now I'm going to start at the beginning of that second border and I'm going to run it one fourth of an inch, nice, generous, one fourth an inch. It's nice there aren't any needles in there anymore. And if it was very long, you could pin it down, but I didn't seem to have any trouble getting that one on. So now I'm gonna put it back to the other end of the corner and I'm gonna stop. And when I open it up, there are all of my prairie points. When I turn it over, I'm going to go back and I'm going to press back towards the dark. And this one already fell right back towards the dark, and we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm going to take, and I'm going to just press. I'm not going to iron. I'm press it, pick it up and press it, pick it up and press it. And you can see that's looking really good. Now I've got it turned over on the back. And you can see that both of them are going in to cover that one and a half inch brown. I'm going to press. I've got to a thick spot right here. I'm going to do extra press on that. 
and then press the next one down. I don't even touch that one over there. Okay, let's turn this over. And this one's flopped because he got pressed. So I just press him that way. And do a little press on there. Now, the piece behind the prairie points is three inches. This was one and a half. This was the fake quilt. But you can see that you need to have, if you're going to use the four and a half inch prairie point, then you need to have at least the three inches behind it for the next border because you're going to come and you're going to take a fourth out of that. There was one more border that was added again. I added another. This time it was four and a half inches of this color and that's really when the quilt started getting bigger. And you can see now the prairie points are all laying there and at the corner because we matched them at the corner when they were pressed and folded out. I did notice that they tended to use two dark colors on the corners and that that holds it right there. And the surprising thing was it didn't take very long to do those prairie points and looking at the different fabrics was fun. Now when my helper was holding it up just now and I noticed this also you're going to find that those prairie points put a lot of weight on your quilt really add some weight to the quilt well and also just now when he was holding it up that if you were going to think of it as a wall hanging and do a smaller one you probably want to think of some way to tack those points up because they wanted to flop down there th because these are four and a half inch squares I think that's what did it and I had already thought about that, and I thought, well, you could go in from the back right now before you put everything else on there and tack them right in the center. And then I remembered that I had a bunch of buttons, and I thought, well, maybe, and that, so I went and got a few of them just to see how they might do. Might even be able to put... Um, if you have like your husband's or somebody's shirt buttons, the buttons that you've saved in a jar for a later date, that might be a, a fun way to finish that and have it stay up. And it might be you do that even if you're not going to use it for a wall hanging. But from the beginning to the end, <clears throat> this was a real uh, teaser with the, uh, the boxes and everything and then adding the parade points on the end. This is Stephanie at Hightower Stitching. I hope you enjoyed this video.